There are new weapons coming live with the Steel Dawn DLC, let me show you the 7 known ones so far in a complete preview. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. There are several new weapons being introduced with the 6th major DLC. All of them are supposed to be Brotherhood of Steel weapons, which will be part of the new Questland rewards or the new Daily Ops rewards pool. Yes, it's coming. Now, the question is, how good are these weapons? Are they endgame? Are they even worth trying? Well, some yes, others not so much. There are a few named three stars legendary weapons on the list, which are not tradable by the way, but there are some normal weapons as well, which makes testing comparisons a bit difficult. Now, keep in mind I will test each weapon with adequate builds, so I'm not conducting base damage tests for sure. In fact, let me show you my testing criteria before we jump into the new weapons. Okay, as usual, I am doing a realistic test, who plays without gear, perks, mutations and so on, right? I really dislike to test weapons focused on their base damage because it makes no sense, it's realistic and a waste of time, it's not practical either. Anyway, I used a full unwielding set as well as a bunch of mutations, here is the list as you can see, there's plenty of them, which will obviously affect some weapons more than others, especially melee ones. I also tested while part of a team with the strange in numbers active. No food or chem buffs were used during all the tests. I don't want to keep anything from you guys. Overall, I tried to make the weapons as strong as possible, I even modded some of them to maximize damage and accuracy. As for the test subjects, I chose ghouls, super mutants and floaters. I also picked behemoths to test the strongest weapons, but not a lot. Anyway, I will explain everything as we go. For now, let's start with one of the strongest weapons in this video, the Fact Finder. This 44 pistol used to be called the Troubleshooter, but now it's releasing as the Fact Finder. It's a 3 stars named legendary weapon with some really good stats. It's basically a two shot explosive gun, which can be obtained from one of the main upcoming Brotherhood quests. In my opinion, this is one of the strongest weapons coming with the new DLC, as you are about to find out. I tested it using a proper build, such as the Concentrated Fire Perk, Demo Expert, Nerd Rage, Bloody Mess, and the 60% extra damage from the Gunslinger perks. I started with Ghouls, and as expected, they go down very easily. It only takes one or two hits to kill each Ghoul, even a level 75 once. When it comes to Super Mutants, things are a bit tougher, I need two hits per Super Mutant in general. However, for level 100 super mutants or legendaries, I need 3 hits or more. No surprise there. These enemies are stronger. What about floaters? Well, these seem to go down rather easily. 2 hits is more than enough to kill them, even level 100 once. I decided to test on a behemoth as well to understand how far this weapon can go, but sadly I don't recommend the fact finder for elites because, as you can see, it takes dozens of bullets to take him down, it's far from being an easy or quick fight. This is not an automatic pistol, so you cannot spam hits, reloading is also a bit slow, and the worst part, this weapon breaks 3 times faster due to the 2 hit and explosive legendary effects. I had to repair it twice to complete the weapon tests. Other than that, this weapon is quite good for daily farming and public events. If you don't have a decent pistol yet, then this is a strong candidate. It's not the best weapon up there, that's for sure, far from it, but it's surely a strong one in my view. The Outbreaker is a 3 stars legendary named Warglaive with an anti-armor effect and a 40% more damage to all enemies. Ay caramba, it sounds like an excellent replacement for the no-legendary version we have right now from Daily Ops. 
The Warglaive is one of the strongest melee weapons right now, and getting a decent legendary version from events or the Prevere is not so easy, so you might want to keep this named weapon, which will be a reward from the new A Brotherhood of Steel quests. Also, you can buy the elemental mods from Regs at Vault 79. The four mods provide the same exact damage, so it's a matter of personal choice regarding their unique effects. Now, moving to the damage tests, this weapon can obliterate ghouls, you can normally one-hit them, but it sometimes takes two hits to kill them, depending on their level and your crit rate as well. It's quite consistent nonetheless. When it comes to super mutants, the scenario is similar to the fact finder, you need 2-3 to three hits to get the job done, a bit more for legendaries as to be expected. Obviously, a bloodied version will do more damage, but the Outbreaker won't be very far behind. I also tested on floaters and surprisingly, they go down really fast to this weapon, I could one hit most floaters regardless of their element. I guess they are rather weak towards energy damage. Only level 100 floaters required a bit more strength to die. Anyhow, this is a very strong entry for melee players. If you play with a full HP build, then you should really keep this weapon. It surely does more damage than the non-legendary version and it's difficult to hit harder with the Warglaive without going for a bloodied version. So this is pretty much as good as it can get for the Warglaive without going into the bloody path. Next, we have the Farmhand, another 3 stars named legendary weapon, which is rather weak in my opinion. I had to use the pre made character to test this one because the new quest, which is supposed to give you this item, is not live yet on the PTS. As such, I was very conditioned in terms of damage boosts. I used no mutations, I had only normal armor, and very few damage perks as shown. Now, the Farmhand is a super sledge. Which which is a strong two hands melee weapon by default. Gotta show some love for the old Super Sledge, alright? But this one comes with some generic legendary effects. 40% more attack speed, which is decent. One endurance and 30% extra damage to ghouls. Now, that's not so decent. As obvious, it's going to be strong versus ghouls, very strong. I can kill them in one or two hits, even though my build is lacking big time on this character. If you are a new player or playing on an alt, this weapon might be worth keeping for ghoul killing purposes only, because this weapon performs really badly when it comes to different enemies. I needed 5 hits per super mutant for example, and that's way too much for an endgame weapon, I really struggled. Floaters also required 3 to 4 hits to go down, which is not a surprise. Overall, this weapon is far from being viable for endgame purposes. I would recommend it for new characters only or for ghoul extermination purposes. Other than that, this weapon is not worth using. I think it's the biggest disappointment from all the seven weapons coming with Steel Dawn. The Mind Over Matter is an interesting new entry. This named energy weapon gives you 10% more damage while aiming and 30% more damage to ghouls. Yep, it's another ghoul killing weapon. This gun is also a reward for the new Brotherhood questline. Now, what about damage? I used the pistol perks, Bloody Mess, Nerd Rage and Concentrated Fire to maximize the potential here and it performs fairly well against ghouls. I mean, I need to spam hit to kill them, it's a bullet eater this weapon, but it gets the job done, somewhat. It kills them rather fast, but that's only because the fire rate is pretty decent. Now, as you should expect, hit spam equals drain durability, so yes, this weapon needs repairing very often, even though it doesn't have the explosive or two-shot effects. Moving forward, this plasma gun is really nothing special, it takes ages to kill super mutants even when I spam hit them. In vets, it does way more damage, as you can see. Out of vets, though, it's a nightmare, especially if you hit them from a medium range. While fighting floaters, you can also expect to 
well, perform several hits until you can kill them. I think this is an unreliable weapon and hardly worth the trouble. There are dozens of better weapons out there, old and new. The damage per hit is also low, which means the mind over matter is far from being an endgame weapon, very, very far. It's another no-go and a huge disappointment in this preview. Now, let's move on to the normal weapons, which can also be legendary, but for now I couldn't get my hands on the plans yet, even less on legendary versions. First, we have the brand new Plasma Cutter. It's a plasma one-hand melee weapon, which has a quiet attack, ideal for these sneaky attacks. The damage output is also very high for a one hand, but the swing speed is slow. You can get the plasma cutter plan from the new daily ops rewards. The drop chance is 3.5% from the elder rewards though, so it's not so easy to get. I use the typical bloodied melee build with the gladiator perks, nerd rage and bloody mess for that extra damage. Anyway, let's move on to the damage tests now. Ghouls required two steady hits to die regardless of their level. The damage is a bit similar to the Oathbreaker, except the Plasma Cutter here doesn't have any legendary effects, which means this weapon can do so much more damage. On Super Mutants, it normally needs 2-3 to three hits per kill, which is again very impressive for a one-hand weapon with no legendary effects. I must confess I was not expecting so much damage from a one-hand melee weapon. This might just become the new meta for one-hand melee builds. On floaters, I also needed 2-3 to three hits per kill despite of their elements and levels. Can you imagine how much damage a plasma cutter can do with 40% more damage and a bloodied effect? Yep, this weapon has a lot of potential and it's surely end game material. The difficult part is to roll a decent legendary version since you cannot craft it as a legendary, but when you do, Oh boy, it's going to one hit basically every normal enemy out there, that's for sure. The next brand new weapon is the Hellstorm missile launcher with a Brotherhood insignia on it. Again, this is only the normal weapon being tested here, no legendary effects. You can get the Hellstorm launcher plan from the new Daily Ops rewards. And the drop chance is the same, 3.5% just like the plasma cutter. Now, I used my typical heavy build to optimize the performance here with the heavy gunner perks. Nerd Rage, Demolitions Expert, Bloody Mess, Concentrated Fire and such. But I must confess, the results were rather disappointing. Why? Well, first of all, the damage is not very impressive, especially if you're not using vats. If you do, then you can one-hit basically everything. Yes, despite a few animation bugs here and there. However, if you want to take advantage of the area damage, Look what happens. Yeah, enemies take several blasts to go down. Also, this weapon breaks insanely fast. In here, my durability was around half. I hit this horde of seven ghouls once and the weapon just broke. I couldn't even finish them off. I had to repair this weapon several times during my tests. It's really a waste of resources. On Super Mutants, a focused blasts do not one hit them. You need two hits per kill, which is rather funny. I mean, a brand new weapon, a missile launcher, which cannot one hit normal enemies with one single blast. Come on. Plus, if you try to kill several enemies at the same time, the damage is so little that it's better to just focus one at a time. At least with Super Mutants and Floaters, which is what I tested here. I know legendary versions will deal way more damage and most likely one hit everything, but still, can you imagine how fast it will break if it's a two shot or explosive for example? You will have to spend a lot of time farming scrap or buying repair kits to keep using this weapon. I don't think it's viable in any way possible, maybe as a secondary weapon, you know, something you use on rare occasions. Other than that, I don't see a lot of value from this Brotherhood launcher, sadly. Oh well, it is what it is, I suppose. 
Lastly, we have the Brotherhood pistol. It used to be called the Chimera pistol, but Bethesda has recently changed its name to the Crusader pistol. They added a level 30 to the pre-made character on the PTS for testing, which is strange. Why not a level 50? So yeah, I am forced to test a low level one here since I can't get my hands on the new plan from Daily Ops. I've been trying, but that 3.5% chance to get it doesn't seem to favor me. Yes, the Crusader Pistol plan can also be obtained from the new Daily Ops rewards. Note that this 10mm gun can be modded to other ammo types such as 5.56 and Fusion Cells. Now, for testing purposes, I went back to a generic pistol build with the 60% more damage on pistols. I honestly didn't expect much from a level 30 pistol, but once I started killing ghouls, things got very interesting. You can hit relatively fast, so even though you do very little damage, you only take a few seconds per enemy kill. I know, in here I needed around 10 bullets or more per kill, but hey, this is a low level item. According to Wikipedia, the base damage for the level 50 weapon is about double, so that means you need way less hits per kill than shown, which is great. I think this Brotherhood pistol has plenty of potential as legendary weapons. I can imagine a bloodied explosive crusader pistol doing a lot of damage, probably one or two hitting everything, I mean most enemies. Fun fact here, this gun only broke once during my tests, even though I shot at least a hundred times, so it seems like it doesn't break as easily. Uh, the durability system in this game is a huge mess and a huge mystery too. Uh, maybe it's just bugged as hell. Anyway, only time will tell how good this weapon really is. For the time being, I can only formulate a superficial opinion, which is very positive. It seems promising, but I'm not entirely sure it will live up to my expectations. There are at least 7 new weapons coming live with the Still Dawn DLC and it's time to move on to my final thoughts. At first, I had the impression that the new weapons are nothing special and they are not worth the grind, but that might not be true, at least for the new weapon plans, which allow you to get all sorts of legendary versions as you play. Some of the normal weapon tests, such as the Plasma Cutter and the Crusader Pistol, show a lot of potential to become top-tier endgame weapons with the new DLC. On the other hand, weapons like the Farmhand or the Mind Over Matter reveal to be weak options with inferior damage and low versatility. The Hellstorm's launcher can inflict a lot of damage to single targets, but the reduced area damage and the extremely low durability makes this weapon a no-go for endgame. At least the Fact Finder is a pretty good named legendary and can be used for every, you know, pistol build with the insurance. You can deal lots of damage with the two shot explosive effects. The Outbreaker is also not a bad alternative to the normal Warglaive, at least. As I mentioned earlier, the Warglaive is one of the best two hand melee weapons right now, so that 40% extra damage can really improve your damage output. Now, I can't say that I'm impressed or really excited about his new weapons. Some of them seem decent or even good, but you know, when you have 20 viable endgame weapons already and it's so difficult to roll what you need to upgrade your current gear, sometimes it's just not worth it. It's not like 10 or 20 more damage per hit will make a huge difference for me, but A, if the rolls end up happening, then I will most likely welcome them into my roast. Moving forward, the new weapons could be better, but they are not bad, plus this is just a preview. As I said, the weapon plans can generate some really strong legendary weapons in the future, and they might become the new meta, like the Crusader Pistol and the Plasma Cutter. 
I really have my fate on them. But before we can find that out, we have some time to sit tight and wait. Well, that's it for this item preview. I am Marta Branco. I hope you enjoyed. If that's the case, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. You can also support me even further if you want. You know what to do. The links are right below in the description box. Now, thanks to all my dear patrons and members for their continued support. And all right, I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.